We start with a puzzle. When an elastic band is stretched, you will learn in this video that energy is stored in it, but we can't see the energy. How do we know this is true? The solution will be given near the end of the video. Welcome to this nothing nerdy video on force distance graphs. Here is the statement from the IB Physics Guide. Force distance graphs are very useful ways of analysing the energy transferred when work is done. Here is a typical multiple choice question on this topic. You should be able to answer it by the end of the video. This is the formula which was introduced in the video on work done as energy transfer. Here is a simple calculation of work done in which force and displacement are in the same direction and the work done is found by multiplying force and displacement. The answer is 1500 joules. If you draw the graph of F against S, then the area of the rectangle under the graph calculated by force times distance gives the value of the work done, 1500 joules. In fact, the method of measuring the area under the graph works also when the force is changing, and this is a very powerful way of calculating work done or energy transferred. Here is an example where the force initially increases and then stays constant before dropping again. To find the work done by the force, we must calculate the area under the graph. We divide it into rectangles and triangles and then calculate each one. This graph can be split into triangles A and C and rectangles B and D, and the total of their areas will be the work done by the variable force. The areas of the triangles is half their base times their height, and the rectangles areas are the products of their sides. And here are the different areas of the different shapes. The total work done is 3950 joules. There are many examples of forces which do not remain constant, and a good one is the force on a stretched spring. The more it is extended, the larger the force that is required to keep it stretched. The force is proportional to the increase in length. This is observed to be true for springs and some other materials. Robert Hooke expressed it in a law. An object which obeys Hooke's law has an extension proportional to the force applied to it. And here is a formula. The force is proportional to the increase from the unloaded length. There is a constant of proportionality k which tells us how many newtons of force are required to extend the spring by one metre, even though most springs would not stretch as far as one metre. We can find the work done extending the spring by plotting the force distance graph. We know that the force increases in proportion to the extension of the spring, so the line is straight through the origin. Here is a force which increases linearly with the distance it moves, so the shape is a triangle. And we measure the area under a triangle by calculating half times the height times the base. In this case, the height is the force F and the base is the extension delta X. And we know from Hooke's law that the force is also proportional to the extension F equals K delta X. So here is the formula for the area under the graph. It is the work done by the variable force as it extends the spring. This work must be represented by a transfer of energy, and in this case it is the gain in elastic potential energy by the spring. Here is the formula for the elastic potential energy in joules gained by a material of spring constant K stretched by delta X. Elastic potential energy is half K delta X squared. So any object will store elastic potential energy when it is squashed or stretched by a force. This video lesson has shown you how elastic potential energy can be stored in physical systems. When it is released, it will convert into other forms. Pause the video to think about the answer to this question. Can you identify the main types of energy that elastic potential energy is converted into in the above situations? 
a catapult, a guitar and a bungee cord can all convert elastic potential energy into other forms. The catapult converts its elastic potential energy mostly into kinetic energy of the missile with a bit of gravitational potential energy when the missile rises. The bungee jumper is just about to rise and the elastic potential energy will convert to gravitational potential energy. The guitar string will vibrate with kinetic energy which we experience as sound which carries energy. Here the work done to slow down the brick is equal to the kinetic energy lost and we can equate those two so we say the formula for kinetic energy half mv squared is equal to the formula for work done f times d and then we can substitute in there all of the numbers that we have and that leaves us with f which is the average force since we don't know whether it's constant and it's 10 newtons. Here is the answer to the puzzle that we mentioned at the beginning. The stretched elastic band contains elastic potential energy and we know this because we only need to release it to let go of it and it will move and snap against our fingers. So it must have contained energy in the first place.